we are being taken out to a little village outside of Tolly Tolly town and um, this is a traditional village what they're trying to do is to put this village on the tourist map so they're looking for government funding uh, to help develop this as a tourist attraction so we're going to go along and we're going to see if we can help put this village on the map We've just stumbled across a coconut processing plant whilst uh, driving to the village and I insisted that we stop and take a look. I'm tempted to come back here and make this a photography project because it is very atmospheric. Hello! <laughs> Uh, let's go and chat with Seifel and find out a little bit more about what goes on in this uh, plant. Uh, this is the process of making copra uh, and the farmer try to do their job and the first time they have to take off the skin of the coconut. And after that, they burn the coconut for about four hours in this place. And then after that, we take off the inside and then uh, they are picked in the bag and it's ready to sell to the Chinese. This smoked coconut flesh, or copra as it's known, is sold to the Chinese market for a number of uses. But there is a lot of byproduct, specifically the mountains of coconut husk. And about the hard skin, we can't analyze to make a charcoal. And most of people here doesn't use a full to cook, but they use uh, charcoal and uh, traditional stove. So we're all familiar with coconuts, and we're getting a bit more familiar with the whole process here. But I bet most of you don't know what a tong pong is. It is this. And this is the seed that grows inside a coconut. Never seen one before. They don't all have them, it's the older ones only. The older coconuts grow them. So they grow inside the flesh, like this, like a little mushroom. The best thing is, they are edible. It's like a cross between a coconut and a mushroom in texture. It's spongy and very sweet. Tasty. I don't know why we don't see more of these. According to folk legend, the name Tolly Tolly comes from the word Totolu, which means three. The Tolly Tolly nation came from three gods who appeared on earth through the golden bamboo, the Langsat peak tree, and Ue Thaka, a kind of rattan. We can try, can't we? The fruit from the Langsat tree is edible and, depending upon its ripeness, can be sweet or sour. Sweet or sour? In between. I like it. Off the main road, behind a pile of coconuts, we discovered an entire community based around the production of virgin coconut oil. This is a different process to the production of copra. We were taken to a dimly lit workshop scattered with large containers, open fires, pots and pans. This is where the oil from the coconut flesh is extracted. First it's run through a shredder and then boiled down to a mulch. Yeah. 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 Leave it for one night. Yeah. Ah, uh, this is. Yeah. So the is it oil. Kind of fermented. Oh, it's yeah. The oil and the water is separate. Yes, it's separate. Yeah. Okay. Oil upside. Okay. Do you want to have a look? There's not much to see, but the oil is on top. The yes, water on top. is underneath. So this is this is what you then make the oil from. And then yes. How do you, 
how do you take that out? Uh, just, bagaimana cara diambil itu? Di atas uh, bisa, just like, ya yeah, itu. There's no main interesting implement. Yeah, this is like this one. Yes. Ada yang berisi apa? Ada yang berisi apa? Ah, yeah. Oh, look, look, that's the oil, oil that's separated from the water. Yeah. yeah. Takes 24 hours. Then you take off the top layer, the oil, and then you boil it. Yeah. Boil it. Boil for. After decanting the mulch into large containers, the oil and water naturally separate. With the oil floating on top of the water, it is extracted and ready for export. So once it's gone through all these processes of boiling and straining, you end up with this. There's still some sediment which goes to the bottom and then the top is pure coconut oil. And so here what they do is they then decant it into their jerry cans and then they sell it. And then it goes into there. So two lessons to be learned from here. One is to get yourself a good guide. Not something we normally do. We don't normally like doing this, but on, in this situation, of course, uh, Saiful and Yaya have been extremely helpful in translating and explaining what's been going on. The second lesson is, is that if ever you're out on the scooter and you just see something of interest, just stop and have a look and you don't know where it will lead you. We literally thought they were just burning coconut husks here and we would just quickly nip in. Well, it's been close to an hour later and uh, we haven't left yet because the whole community here are obviously very proud of their work and they want to show us the whole process and they want to show us their homes as well. So, uh, yeah, and we haven't even started on our um, trip to the village yet. This is just a little detour. So Robin, he ran away and he ran away. <laughs> <laughs> So this is Malanga, uh, the village of Malanga. We've driven through the rice paddy plantations, through the coconut plantations, we saw the coconut processing plant, and we're now in among the foothills of the mountains behind. You see it's quite an overcast day, but uh, before we get Seifel to show us around uh, the main sites, there's just a couple of things I wanted to show you here. Now, um, if you can't afford air conditioning, then why not just build your house with a roof that can open and close? That's exactly what it is. That's a roof that has been opened up to allow airflow through and to keep the place cool or I suppose to heat it up in the sunshine. Uh, never seen this before. And uh, I think just a bit further along here was another uh, rather pretty looking house. So a lot of these houses here have, they don't necessarily have manicured lawns, but they do have a lot of foliage growing around them. And of course, very brightly painted as well like this. Most of them seem to be two-storey, but we have been told the traditional Tolly Tolly house is actually three storeys, made of wood, of course, and uh, often stilted, although not always. Uh, this is the house of the head of the village. Uh, it's also a homestay as well. I heard someone mention strawberries. It sounds like they're growing strawberries here. Abdu Salam and Norma run Shaney's family homestay. We were shown around the rooms, but the main attraction was helping open the roof of a typical Malanga house. So I mentioned the, uh, the opening roofs. They are unique to the village. They, it's not a feature of Tolly Tolly or Sulawesi, it's just this village. And one of the reasons for doing it is to dry out foodstuffs, also laundry as well. But uh, here they've got uh, coffee and it uh, looks like they're drying some maize as well. Like most villages in Sulawesi, the production of food is paramount to the local economy. Waihuni, Norma's sister, runs the local store and she explained that all the food produced and dried on the family's open-topped roof were available for sale, including local coffee and palm sugar.
just come out for a little walk uh, while they prepare a very early lunch for us. The first thing we did was we found a tree that had the jambu fruit on it. I think the first time we had that was Thailand. Uh, it's lovely. That was really good. And then we carried on up the road looking for snake fruit. Found the tree, but no snake fruit. <laughs> it's finished, the season's finished. Carried on up the road, saw a man and his son harvesting cassava root, which is great because you, um, it's, it's actually a pretty plant with these uh, red stalks, but underneath there's this huge great root. You take the root up, you take all the bits off that you could cook, and then you put the root back in the soil and it just produces more plants, so it's just a brilliant crop. It's, uh, it is a very pretty village and it's very quiet, and I was told by Seifel that in the morning it's really quiet because everybody goes out and they go out to work in the surrounding area. So it's really, really chilled out. And I was thinking that this would be a great place to come if you're an artist, because the textures and the lights and the colors are phenomenal. There's so many things you could paint. And also as a, perhaps an, an author or a writer, any kind of artist type person would be able to just quietly sit here on the veranda, on, on the terraces and just work away in real peace. What's the name of the tree? Uh, we call it Kelor. Kelor. Uh, we can cook to be a uh, soup, vegetable soup, and we can also uh, fry to be a tea. I mean, fry without oil. Yeah, rose. Well, I don't normally make it a habit of filming ourselves eating, but this is an exception because Abdul Salam, who is the uh, master of the house, has come back from work for an early lunch and he's invited us to join him. And so we are eating a traditional Buganes. That's the local tribe here, Buganes. Uh, we're having a traditional lunch. Well, I say traditional, but uh, this is pretty much what they'll eat every day. So it's uh, fish and uh, various salsas. But there is one thing in particular I wanted to show you because I have, not only have I never eaten this before, I've never even heard of it before. <laughs> And that is bees' eggs. Yep, you heard that right, bees' eggs. And uh, they prepare it by cooking it up with uh, garlic and onion and a few other herbs and spices. And then they wrap it up in a banana leaf and steam it. Um, I did ask if this is a dish that they eat every day and they said no, it is a speciality dish. I'm supposed to be vegetarian, but for me this doesn't count because it is absolutely delicious. Okay, we're still in Malangi and this time we're going to learn how they make brown sugar. Now, brown sugar is made from palm trees, like most things here. And Jamie, I think correctly, deduced yesterday, it's the same as what we were having in India, which is jaggery. It doesn't taste like sugar, it tastes a million times better. It's like a sweet, it's like caramel, it's just lovely. Anyway, it's made from the palm tree and they put uh, a, an incision into the palm and then they take the sap and that's how it starts. So this has nothing to do with the, uh, the nut itself. Uh, they, they tap the tree and they process it by um, boiling it and it makes a kind of hot toddy, which is non-alcoholic, but they can then ferment it further and make an alcoholic drink out of it. Yes, this. Yes. this is this. Yes. Yes. Okay. So it's bubbling away down there. It's just been put into a glass for me to try. Quite nice, sugary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for about four hours, and we put candle nut inside. The hot toddy is just a byproduct of palm sugar processing. Seifel explained that the candle nut, similar to a walnut, is added to the boiling liquid to thicken it before being decanted into a coconut shell where it dries off. The end product is sold in the village store just down the road. So we're, we're in the shop in the village, the one little shop, and they have examples of the products. This is the gula mera, which is the brown sugar, which actually means red sugar. But, and so it's come out of the coconuts. It goes into the coconuts, solidifies. But it's made of palm. Yeah, it's what we've just been watching. Yeah, yeah this, is the, this is the result. And then you just chip it off.
boleh dibelakang pak. Ini mana know what this is? It's cocoa. Let's open it and have a look. Sweet. Very good. Very sweet. Nice taste. Oh yeah. You can eat. Oh wow. Oh. You can eat. Yeah. You can eat. This family was sorting through their clove harvest, a process we covered in last week's episode. After sampling their cocoa, Saiful was keen to show us Abdu Salam's main business interest, set deep in the dense rainforest. So Saiful has just said, do we want to see the real Spider-Man? We are about to go and watch Spider-Man in action. I'll give you a clue, we're surrounded by coconuts, so I think you can guess what we're going to go and see. I just asked Ali uh, how much he owns in the way of coconuts. He said he owns seven square kilometers. Just coconut, Kalapa. That's a lot of coconut trees. Uh, the coconut Spider-Man you saw, that is his nephew. And his cousin owns this new, newly built house, or it's being built at the moment, in among the coconut plantations. And uh, the guys that climb the trees can, will, will climb many, many thousands in a year. And you can see he's pretty bloody damn quick at it, isn't he? Oh. <laughs> this is fresh young coconut with palm sugar, jaggery, or whatever you want to call it. Lovely. <laughs> To our guides Saiful and Yaya, this trip gave us a real insight into the industry of the people of Toli Toli. The village of Malanga was fascinating and we think deserves local government funding and perhaps even investigated by the UNESCO World Heritage Office. Tired but thrilled at what we had learned today, we headed back to Tolly Tolly through the many rice plantations and took a final stop at a popular coffee shop set in among the rice fields. Well, we just stopped off for an afternoon coffee at a very pleasant outdoor cafe, which is just here. We met the owner who actually also owns the rice plantations behind. He owns uh, a number of acres and uh, he set up this coffee shop afterwards, after he'd set up his rice plantation, so all the workers have somewhere to come and drink coffee. Accosted by lots of locals for selfies, of course. Now, one thing he does do, you know, this is his home over here, is that he has the famous golden bamboo. Now, golden bamboo is particularly significant to Tolly Tolly because it's one of the three symbols of Tolly Tolly. Golden bamboo, it's not something that you see that often, or at least we don't see it that often. Uh, but he has golden bamboo growing in his garden. If ever you plan to visit Sulawesi, we can thoroughly recommend Tolly Tolly. With people like Hendra in the tourism office laying on guides like Yaya and Saiful, we were given a unique insight into the people and culture of central Sulawesi. Thank you, Hendra, Yaya and Saiful. Bye. 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 Bye.